Hey guys, it's Moxie Dave, coming at you with another quick video about servers and computers and nerd type stuff, because that's what I dig. And uh, judging from the number of views, you guys dig it too, so why not show you some more. This is an HP DL380 G5 that I picked up on Craigslist for 400 bucks. Man, you go back about five years, you start seeing technology on Craigslist that would have cost 10 grand, 15 grand, 20 grand. Five years ago, it's now under a thousand dollars. It's unbelievable. Cat, that's enough. I know. I know. You want to be a star. So do I. That's why I'm doing this. Open up this little doodad here. Makes it really easy on uh, servers. The hardware is meant to be messed with, so they make it really easy for you. Especially the HP machines are awesome. Lift off the heat sink, and you can see the. Uh, thermal interfaced material right there paste arctic silver type stuff that you uh, can buy online that looks like the original stuff that uh, was put on there at the factory so virgin we're stoked this whole heat sink assembly is one unit all you gotta do is just clean off the gunk on the bottom of that remove the processor replace it with the new one put on some more of that gunk very, very thin layer of it. Uh, it's just meant to fill out the surface imperfections on the processor and the heat sink so the two can mate effectively and transfer heat between them better. That's the whole point of that junk in there and if you don't use it, uh, your processor is probably going to burn up or it's not going to last very long uh, if you use it very heavily. So you always want to make sure to replace that stuff with brand new junk. It's cheap and it comes in this little uh, comes in these little tubes. Ceramic is the brand that I have, but they're basically all the same. Uh, there's a, you might see a few degrees of difference if you're running some super uber hyper overclock nonsense, but who cares? Just get some high quality stuff and you'll be fine. Doesn't matter what brand it is. Um, take the old processor out by pushing this little hook down, releasing it from that tab, and then it just lifts right up and pops out and now we can grab the processor you want to hold the processor by the edges because on the back there's all these contacts you don't want to get fingerprints, grease, uh, foreign objects, cat hair can't believe you're being so quiet Booger um, onto those contacts because that will cause a problem and it won't connect to the pins on the socket and then it just won't work. You just put some alcohol on a q-tip and uh, make sure it's clean. I want to get all our fingerprints and junk off of there so we make great contact. Just going to go around it and clean the contacts. I'm not going to get aggro about it. If you notice there's some junk on there somewhere, well, you probably had a non functional processor to begin with, but might use a pencil eraser, works very well to clean off uh, these gold plated contacts. Alright, so we're ready to toss it in to the socket there. And if you notice, there's a little arrow on one end of the processor, and the socket itself is cut on one edge. So it's very easy to determine what way to put it in there. You'll also see a couple of notches here, one at the top and one at the bottom, or both on the sides, depending on how you're looking at it, which correspond with notch or two notches sometimes in the processor socket. Once the processor's in, you just drop this down. You don't need to put any force on it at all. You take the lever and it feels like it's going to crack. It feels it'll probably creak, make some noise. Don't worry about it. Just chuck that thing down in there, put it in the tab and you're done. And take your alcohol q-tip and just rub it across the top of the processor. I call it TIM, thermal interface material. Basically what you need to do is just put a small blob or line is what I like to do on one side of the processor. It's a little tough to do and get it for the camera, but I'm just going to put a thin little blob. That's all you need. Spread it as evenly as you can across the processor. You don't need to get the whole thing. Once you put that heat sink on there, it'll spread it out. Alright, so now we're ready to throw our heat sink on. We're just going to line up these holes with the pins in the socket. Drop it right down. And 
and just give it a little twisty twist to kind of uh, squish out that junk on there. And that doesn't feel like a great hold, but see if I try and pull this out of here now, I, I met with some resistance because of the uh, cohesion of that material. So I didn't get a great contact patch. I'm going to add a little bit more of the thermal interface material. Um, this will be pressed down. Well, let's try that. Let's just put it on there. We've got a bunch of this stuff, so who cares? Let's test it out and make sure it works. Put it on there. Close the lid. That puts pressure onto the heat sink, pushing it down onto the processor, squishing all that goop out, and filling in the, the little micro cracks and whatnot. <laughs> micro cracks. So we got fairly decent coverage. It's not bad. But I'm going to use that as kind of a template to add more. Just going to, hey, there's my cat. I knew you were around. She always wants to be part of the videos, so I let her. So you put that down in there. Let's close the lid again. Give it a little push, because we love it. Let's pull it out again and see what it looks like. Awesome. Get the junk off of there. That's my little business card, actually. And just rub the crap out of this thing. So I bought this additional heat sink online on eBay, just using the part number off of the other one, and I was hoping they would uh, be ex pretty much identical, and they appear to be. So anyway, I'm going to close that up, drop that down. So one last thing we got to do. Over here we have what's called a voltage regulator module. And this is a circuit board that provides power for the processor. And it's extra and separate. You'll see there's another slot over here for an additional one. Since our com computer here, our server, only came with one processor, it only came with one VRM. So I had to buy another VRM, which cost me about 10 bucks on eBay. If you were to buy this from HP at the time that the server came out, it would be $100 or more, I'm sure. Um, technology, again, five years old for the win, baby. So you'll notice a notch in the corner of this thing. You just line it up with the notch that's in the slot. Drop it in. Feel it click. And that's it. That's all you got to do. Upgraded processors, eight cores, and we hope it doesn't blow up. Oh boy. Come on, baby. Servers generally take a little while to come online because they're doing all kinds of tests when they start up to make sure everything's running well. So we don't expect this to do anything for 15 or 20 seconds, which is why I'm not freaking out just yet. If we're hearing the fans turn down a little bit. That means the tests are going well. Server is going to power up any second now. Come on, baby. Yeah! All right, let's see it. I don't smell anything burning. That's what we want to see. There we go, two processors, identical, three gig each. We're gonna go through all the BIOS junk and hopefully see Windows start up here in a minute. I apologize to all you Linux people, Linux people, Unix people, BSD, Solaris, Sun, whatever. Who cares? Use whatever OS you like. At work, this is primarily what I work on, so it's just convenient for me to use at home. And you know what? It works. Oh, yeah. All right, we're stuck. Hey, buddy. Say hi. Yeah. Sure.